freeze. Roy Alon was the stunt arranger and performer on every episode of Dempsey and Makepeace from 1984 to 1986. His ability to give motion picture action on a TV budget gave this show the edge over the competition. When he wasn't flying through the air, falling hundreds of feet from a building as seen here in the pilot episode, or crashing a Rolls Royce on Tower Bridge, he could be found doubling the actors. Car stunts were as much a part of the success of the show as the on-screen chemistry between the two leads. Here is a fine example from Wheelman. Val Mazzetti doubles Michael Brandon, who is chased by the two police rovers driven by Greg Powell and Colin Skeeping.
Here we see Val again at the wheel, and when a big bang is required to spice up the sequence, the special effects boys deliver. Now, Val in the Mercedes and Jim Dowdell in the other, the build-up to a great car. The pipe ramp can just be seen positioned behind that rather handily located bush. Uh, the wig is attached to Jim's safety helmet, and there's not much of a roll cage either, but just enough to keep him safe during this truly spectacular pipe roll. Motorbikes now, and Chris Webb and Roy Alon are trying to shoot Gareth Milne and Elaine Ford, who are doubling for our two heroes in this Docklands shoot em up. Here is Roy demonstrating just that. Val Mazzetti doubling Michael Brandon for the transfer and on top of the bus, and Roy himself crashing the motorcycle at the end of the sequence. Yeah. 
Now, every once in a while, you need an actor to go that extra mile and really sell the scene. Stunt performers are actors and are ideal for these type of roles. Here we see Lex Malloy getting shot at a bus stop instead of our hero Dempsey. Nick Hobbs gets the point, thanks to Glynis Barber, not his first time on the receiving end of her lethal loveliness, joined here by Andy Bradford. Keep driving till you reach a police station. Try anything and the gun goes off. Here, Gareth Milne is the shotgun-wielding hoodlum trying to get rid of our heroes. Drop it! And Royal on himself here as the JCB driver with a grudge. A lot of boxing now, and two big name stuntmen slug it out. Jerry Crampton and Greg Powell. That's just before George Cooper gives Dempsey a lesson in pain. Okay, I'll okay. so I'll carry for around and I'll drop you in a second. <laughs> Terry Plummer seen crashing through the table here just before the old bill turn up.
of PC's Wayne Michaels and Simon Crane. Royal On diving into the action as one of the SI-10 task force and Romo Guerrera as one of the bad guys. Elaine Ford was Glynis Barber's double for many of the shows in the series. Here are two very good examples of Elaine on double duty. Stuntman Dave Brandon seen there as the jewellery thief. Now a couple of really fabulous examples of knockdowns. Hey. Elaine Ford there with an absolutely brutal example of a knockdown. Here's another one, this time from Dorothy Ford, no relation, and she's doubling Kate O'Mara. <music> Stuntman Steve Emerson now, who is given to acts of violence, as we'll see here. It's about time you do something about this. Or well, maybe you'd like to help us. Out! Come on, come on! Keep the no, don't come tell on. Frankie. He'll want a refund. Where is he? he? Just finished his breakfast. He's been up after night. You know what I mean? I'll tell him you're here. You do that. Hey, look, we got Lady Cop here. What? Do you fancy a bash? Yeah, don't mind if I do. Tipping now tries to evade capture with a bit of crazy driving, and uh, sadly it doesn't go his way. Andy Bradford now laying down the law in this episode called The Squeeze. I can't see. There's no light in here. Just start shoving the money through. I know how much there should be. I'll tell you when we got it all. And you can stop groping around in the dark. Sit back and enjoy the view, OK? What do you mean, shove the money through? Open up the back, will ya? Do you think I've gone soft in the head or something? Now, listen. 
If you don't shove that money out through the chute in double quick time, we'll burn our way in. That's not the plan. What are you on about? We'll get the keys from the two in front and open up. Get that torch over here. Roy Alon now getting in on the action as a northern boatman. Say, Mac, you know a guy named Bryce? He's a tugman around here. Tell me, Bryce, what do you want with him? Oh, well, we got a houseboat that we got to have moved, and uh, we heard that he could do it. We understand he'll do most things for money. <laughs> he didn't do anything for money more like. That's him over there on his tub. Will you take us out to see him? Not me, lady. I'm off. And Sammy Bryce don't take too kindly to visitors. Go, go, go! I've been thrown out of better places than this! What's that with that, Eddie? Don't ask me. I'm not a gambler, am I? Greg Powell now turns up as a security guard with a rather temperate contract. I'll be back. Here fast. Fast won't be quick enough. He's dead. The police just got here. Roy loved a high fall, and when he wasn't available, he'd asked Terry Forrestal to do one for him. Here's a few from both of them, and one from Sadie Eden, doubling Susie Quattro. Here's a selection of stunts from the show that the public always seem to remember. We start with Colin skeeping, transferring from one truck to another from the original pilot episode, Armed and Extremely Dangerous. Truck driven by Greg Powell and his co-driver is Richard Hammett.
Greg's Uncle Denny pal seen here, Dublin Ray Smith. Now, here we see stuntman Derek Ware going over the wall, after Rocky Taylor tries to stop him, that is. Here, Dempsey is trapped in a boot of a car, but stuntman Steve Wyman manages to break free and jump to safety. Steve even manages to get himself under the opening title sequence. Another Roy Pipe roll here, Pipe concealed in a pile of rubbish in the middle of a very snowy field. Val Mazzetti seen here doubling Michael Brandon and Roy getting on the receiving end. Greg Powell behind the wheel of the white van causing havoc on the roads. Paul Weston doubles Michael Brandon during this climactic sequence. Go 
in the lane. Ford joins him. Dublin Glynis Barber. And finally, we leave you with a terrific sequence from the pilot episode featuring Peter Brace as an assassin being chased by Dempsey through a London hotel, obviously forgetting that all damages must be paid for. I wanted to take him alive. Thanks anyway, Sergeant. What got you up? I am very proud. It, yes. it, it was one of the most fun yes. times uh, in my career. Uh, I had resisted doing a series up till that point. Um, and it was the first time I'd committed myself to do a television series. And had I known it was going to be as good as it was, I, I might have done it earlier, but then I might have been married then. Who knows? Who knows? You know? Well, I'm, I'm just proud that I did something that a lot of people enjoyed and, and still enjoy. You know, we still get a lot of feedback from people and just have done something that has brought enjoyment to people makes me proud. This was a present from the crew afterwards. They gave this to, they gave him his gun, engraved on it to Michael, Dempsey and Makepeace, 1984 to 1986. Oh my goodness. And it says, with love, from the crew, and uh, I mean, it's it's a real 357 Magnum. Uh, it we we stopped the barrel, so it, it doesn't fire. Um, but I carried this, and when they tried to disguise it within all kinds of different wrapping, I knew exactly what it was when I picked it up. It became part of my body weight, um, and it was very much another character in the show. Uh, I shot a lot of the crew. <laughs> Uh, not, not meant to, but um, the wadding that would come out when, when the charge went off. Um, many focus pullers, uh, cameramen, uh, to this day I run into, say like, oh, 
you shot me, remember, on uh, episode... <laughs> um, well, one thing I'm happy for is I don't have to say freeze anymore.